Greetings, Hoggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to open the box for the newly arrived QRP Labs QCX Mini. It's a tiny little thing. It's going to go into this little container right here. Now let's compare this with the original QCX. This would be the QCX Mini. It's a nice little kit. There are no um, surface mount parts that you must mount, although there are lots of surface mount parts, but they're already mounted. So that's very nice. Now, this kit is not a kit for beginners. Um, you know, until you've done a few kits, got them under your belt uh, before you do this one, because it's very, very tightly packed on the board there. And uh, the way this is done, this uh, radio is not a standard superhead. It has a TALO detector. It's the equivalent of a software-defined radio, except it's all done in hardware. Uh, although there is a fair amount of control software that will allow this kit to do things like act as a keyer, uh, even read the CW that's coming across. Uh, it has its built-in test equipment for setup, and it's just a very cool radio. The reason for this pocket size, uh, literally pocket size little thing, is for those who like to go up on the tops of hills and do not like to take a full-size radio like this. This is a 5-watt, 30-meter radio. It's not a QCX. It's uh, made by NW8010 uh, uh, from some now defunct uh, DX organization that was making those. So let's open the box and see what's inside. And then in the near-term future, I'll have lots of videos um, that I'll intersperse with others uh, about putting this thing together and doing its final testing and so on. Now, um, I know another uh, YouTuber, uh, he goes by the term Miss.Geek, M-I-S-C-D-O-T-G-E-E-K, um, Miss.Geek, who is putting one of these together, got it all together, and ran into trouble with it. So I run that risk too of running into trouble with this. I had trouble with my original QCX. I finally got it to work. And it's a dream of a radio. Uh, it's just very nice. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens. Let's open the box. Well, here's the package as it arrived today. A USPS first class package. And it comes from a zip code 65301 in Sedalia, Missouri. And uh, what Hans has done now, Hans is based in Turkey, and he has a uh, office in the United States where they ship stuff from to save uh, on shipping overall. So we're going to open this up and see just what we have in here. Now, I should point out, this is the basic radio. This is the QCX. It, this one happens to be 40 meters. Um, and as you can see here, things are pretty tightly uh, put together on this board. There are two uh, surface mount components there and there, and those come pre-assembled. So what Hans did was make two different versions of this. This version has been deprecated. He's made a version that goes on a larger PC board, and you can get a larger case for it. And it's uh, about that big. Let me show you an example. This is a 30-meter radio. It's not a QCX. It's something I made from a kit. Um, and uh, that's about the size of the QCX. As you can see that the original QCX is quite small. Um, a lot of people didn't like it so small. Plus, this particular model is uh, cabinet unfriendly. Look at those 
knobs there. This one's way up above this one. And then you've got these little push buttons way down here on the bottom. So unless you specifically decided to uh, construct this with these things mounted separately on a, on a box, it's very compact, yes, but it does not fit into a case very nicely. Now there have been cases made for it, but uh, for this one, he, he went two ways. He went to the larger one, the QCX Plus, and then the next one is the QCX Mini, which is this one right here, which should come with the case. It looks like this is the case. Okay, something, oh, this is a cover. Here are the pieces to the case. It goes like this. And it's only going to be that big. Now this is compared to the full-size one. Okay. The full-size one. Here is the original QCX. Here's the Mini. Okay. And that's the case with everything in it. All right. And this will have places for the the two controls. One of these is a um, r rotator. Um, well, I'm trying to remember the name for it, but it counts the rotations. This is just a standard volume control. And then these will be push buttons, and they'll come up from the case. This is the case itself, or the uh, kit itself. I'm just going to put things back in here to keep them all in one place. Okay. Let's take them out and look at them and see what we have to do on this kit. This right here is the display. Okay, we'll just cut this so you can see what a display looks like. This is the two-line display, okay, and it will mount in its place right there in the uh, box, mount right under it so you can see the lines. Look at that. There's lots of surface mount components and they are already mounted. Now I'll tell you what I'm going to do with this when I get this thing uh, where I'm building it. I'm going to actually look at each one of these under a microscope. On my first QCX I had a problem with uh, there was a solder ball shorting to wires and you couldn't see it except under the microscope. This circuit board has several things that break off. Okay, uh, this is the, uh, the, the main title here. These are little things that break off. They're spacers. They have places for more components. There are a couple up here uh, surface mount components on here. Okay, so this is going to take uh, quite a bit of time to build, and I'm going to try and give um, updates as I build. Okay, here is one section of components, and they seem to really be jumbled. That's a capacitor. There's a header right there. Here is one of the potentiometers. Here is the output, which is, of course, a uh, BNC connector. So I'll have to have an adapter for that. We've got the connectors here for the key and the headset and power. Okay. Lots of things in there. This has the large socket it has the large socket for the main chip and knobs and some potentiometers and the power 
cord there. I thought it was in the other one. It's in here. And this is the rotary encoder. And I don't see in there the actual... Oh, here it is. This is the actual chip. And it's very important to note the number on the chip. T107A. That's the firmware code. And we're going to have to go online to get the manual. Here are some toroids, toroid cores. Here is, I think, the band kit. This has got little toroids. That's a magnet wire for winding them in here. These are the cores right here. And you can see parts and bits and pieces in there. I'm not going to open those bags tonight. So the next thing we need to do is download the manual. So let's go to the computer and do that. Here is qrp-labs.com where you can buy all of these. They've got, the, it's better to look over here for a more complete list. The QCX Mini 5 watt CW transceiver kit, which is what I have. The QCX Plus 5 watt transceiver kit, which is the big one. It goes bigger. It's this right here. And the regular one, the one that I showed you. We're going to go to the QCX Mini right here. Okay. And note the price, $55. Now you have to pay extra for the case. All right. So this would be the Mini. Uh, the enclosure is optional we got to see the enclosure it's quite small okay now we come down here for the assembly manual and the operating manual two different manuals now um, we'll take the assembly manual here okay here is the assembly manual note that it's 121 pages and I'll show you why it's that much it's because the quality of the manual is amazing. Um, it shows you on the board where everything goes, okay, and how things are laid out, and what's on it, and then what you need to uh, put in. This is the picture and so on. Okay, so let's come down here and come a little further. Install 47 nanofarad uh, or 473 capacitor. The 47 nanofarad capacitor is labeled 473 and is capacitor C9. And then it tells you exactly where that goes on the board. This is about the best documentation I've seen. I would even go so far as to say it's on a par with Heathkit documentation. Plus this is in color and it takes you down through uh, each one all the way down. Now it will tell you to install multiple things like C5 and C8 and show exactly where they go. So what we're going to do is print this manual uh, in color, two-sided. So we'll come up here to print and we're going to print on my um, laser jet. Okay, and it is print on both sides. <clears throat> now, uh, one problem I have had in the past is this paper size letter. Okay, that is letter. Um, I have in the past tried to print the European standard paper on regular letter paper that runs off the top and bottom. So we'll go ahead and let that one print. Cartridge low, yes I know that. Okay, and uh, now let's go back and look at the operating manual for the firmware uh, 1.07. Okay, and this is 52 pages. It's because there are lots of menus Lots of things that you can do. This is an unbelievably sophisticated radio for 
uh, different things it will do. It will even accept the GPS receiver to get its internal clock right and get the frequency right and so on. So let's print this also and we'll print that in color. And we want it in color because we want those uh, pictures where uh, you can tell just uh, which part is being put in which place. Now one of the funny things about uh, QRP Labs uh, website right up here QRP Lab shop see here where it says click here is shop that's where you actually go to buy uh, things they've got them all here and you can pay for things um, either with PayPal or with uh, a, um, a regular credit card okay so these are all the different kinds of things they sell there, including whisper transmitters and receivers and so on and so forth. So good stuff. All right, that's what we've got ahead of ourselves. Piles and piles of parts that have to be inventoried and, and put together. Now, I've had a number of people ask me, they say, when you put a kit together, can you kind of walk us through the steps so we know what to do to put a kit together? Well, we've opened the box. That's the first start. The next thing to do is inventory the parts. Now, to do that, we had to have a parts list, which meant we needed to print the manual. So we'll print the manual. It got printed, and uh, we'll take a good look at it and uh, get to work on inventorying the parts. Then you set up your workbench, and I'll show that. I've got a device that I can use to hold these circuit boards in place, sort of like a third hand, while I solder to it. And uh, we'll just have some fun. It's a 20-meter uh, CW only. Well, it will do whisper, too. It will do whisper, too. Uh, CW only and whisper. Um, and it's five watts output, give or take. Okay, and uh, we may have to do a little adjustment. Hans Summers, who made these kits, has done a number of videos on them. So that's it. Thank you all very much for watching. Please check out decastlercom slash support for different ways to help fund this channel. And also please subscribe and click like. And uh, this is the first in the series on the QCX. And we'll see you all soon. Till we next meet, 73.